So now I'm sitting down here on my workbench to kick off a new project that I'm calling Chevy Pie. Chevy Pie is my take on a movie entertainment system for the back of my Chevy Traverse. Uh, a little background on this is that our minivan has a built-in display with a Blu-ray player attached, an SD card, and an HDMI port. We tend to just use the SD card so we're not flipping out Blu-ray discs all the time. We've been able to load that SD card up with several dozen movies that the player just continuously cycles through so that the kids can watch movies and be entertained while we're out on the road or on long trips. I don't have that in my Traverse and the kids can get very bored and very noisy during my typical hour and a half, hour to hour and a half commute home from daycare uh, once a week that I need to take care of. So I thought it'd be fun to build a movie entertainment system to put in the back of the Traverse for the kids to watch movies while we're getting home. This particular video is going to be part one of a several part episode of putting this together. Uh, we're going to focus on the basic concept and the hardware. And in future episodes, we'll start assembling that hardware and putting together the software needed. Speaking of the software needed, it's going to be based on the Plex Media Center software. That software is also what we use in our house to manage movies, TV shows, DVR, and music. For the Traverse, we will be focusing just on movies for now, but we may expand that to music in the future and potentially write some custom plugins uh, to add other features to, to the Plex on the, running on the Chevy Pi. The main hardware for this system is going to be based on the Raspberry Pi 4, a 4 gigabyte model. The Raspberry Pi Foundation just recently released these new models of the Raspberry Pi that have different memory SKUs, uh, 1 gigabyte, 2 gigabytes, and 4 gigabytes. Since we're going to be streaming video, I thought it best to go with the fastest um, Raspberry Pi out there with the largest amount of memory, which is 4 gigabytes. Um, so I picked up a few kits to go ahead and assemble the system from. So we've got the Raspberry Pi 4 here with 4 gigabytes of RAM. Okay, and if we open up the Raspberry Pi 4 box, It has a slightly different form factor than older, ras like older Raspberry Pi 3. Um, but basically, it's the same. We've got four USB ports, um, Ethernet, which we're not going to use, um, and you know, USB-C for power. And it's actually got two uh, mini HDMI display ports on here. Um, we've got the standard Raspberry Pi foundation case which we'll use initially to set things up. What my plan is is to print some sort of 3D printed enclosure that fits nicely into a nook that sits in my traverse. We've got three different heat sinks to apply to the Raspberry Pi uh, to help keep things cool. We've got a power supply and we've got an inline on off switch uh, for the Raspberry Pi. I don't know if we'll use this or not. That is the main hardware that we're going to be using for the unit. Um, we also have a few other things. Of course, we have the SD car card that we're going to be using, which is 256 gigabytes, um, which I picked up on Amazon. Um, what we're going to be doing is having two network adapters, the built-in network adapter that's already on the Raspberry Pi, and then this uh, secondary network adapter. So the car will have its own uh, Wi-Fi access point that you can connect to. And then there will also be another Wi-Fi connector so that it can connect to the home Wi-Fi access point. So when the car pulls into the garage, um, what I'd like to happen is that it's able to connect to the server here at the home and grab any new video files that I've somehow designated to be copied over to the car and copy those over. Um, also with the possibility, I don't think this will always be connected to the internet, but the secondary Wi-Fi will be able to tether to my phone so that if I want to give the kids access to the internet for their tablets, um, it'll then route through the Raspberry Pi in the car and then through my phone to the rest of the internet. Another thing that we're gonna be using is this, uh, 
switched to wireless keyboard, at least to get things kicking off initially. I may switch to something else that's more user friendly for the control system, uh, but we'll start out using this keyboard. And then lastly is the standard Raspberry Pi touchscreen. Um, sold by the uh, Raspberry Pi Foundation. Um, this is a 7 inch touchscreen that will attach directly to the Raspberry Pi and be used to display video from the Raspberry Pi. Um, the idea being is that uh, the kids will be able to watch this video on the main unit and then also be able to stream secondary videos to their tablets. So if they don't want to watch what the other kids are watching, then they can watch uh, via their tablets. The screen's a little small, so we'll see how that works out. Um, I'm also concerned about performance of the Raspberry Pi. If we're doing video on the built-in screen, uh, we're going to probably have some performance issues also streaming videos to the tablets, and especially if it's multiple tablets going at once. I'm hoping that we can at least do two streams at once, one on the main stream, one to one of the tablets. Um, all the videos are going to be pre-encoded to hopefully work, work best for the display and for the tablets so that there's no on-the-fly transcoding. If you find this project interesting, you can check out links to the hardware that I'll be working with in the description below. If you want to follow along as I post new videos for different parts of this project, you can go ahead and subscribe to the channel and then you'll have access to each of those updates as they come through or updates to any of my other videos that are out on the channel.